are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fine. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for returning back here to watch my videos. If you are a returning subscriber, may God bless you for your love and your support. But if it's your first time here on my channel, hello, welcome to my channel. Please, before you leave, remember to subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on that notification bell. You will find it down there so that you will be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I promise you, you will always enjoy every content that I upload on this channel. So dear friends, you have been online dating up searching for true love. You know how it can be challenging. You know how it can be frustrating. The struggle is real. <laughs> I always say this because I know the truth guys. But once you find that true love on online dating apps, Oh my God, <laughs> it's like you forget all the struggles that you have ever been through to search for true love on online dating apps. You become so happy. The excitement. It's like you have done something and then it paid you off. <laughs> You even be proud of yourself to be patient enough to wait <laughs> until you succeeded. So it's true. Even me, when you guys update me, oh my God, Bella, I found the one. <laughs> On this side, you don't see me, but I jump for happiness. <laughs> if you remember the story I shared with you of the surprise wedding. So it was a surprise for me too. When she sent me the photos of their wedding, I jumped for happiness. I was screaming and my husband was around. <laughs> asked me what is happening i told her oh my god she got married she got married <laughs> who then i told my husband because my husband knew about her <laughs> i had guided her for almost five years so i was super happy i could remember all the encouragement i gave to her but guys despite all those excitements that you can have when you find love on online dating apps Please, please, we take an example, you find a guy and you start chatting on online dating apps after two or three months, this guy wants to get married to you. So before you make that important decision, please, please ask yourself these questions. Am I making a right decision? What if it doesn't work? Have I looked into all the red flags into this guy? Oh, I'm just blinded by his love and sweet words. Yes, I am very proud of myself, but what if this proud turns out to be a disappointment? You have to ask yourself these questions before you get married, not on your wedding day, not at all. Yes, I know sometimes I've got comments, Bella, your intros are unnecessary. <laughs> But this is very, very important, guys. Take it seriously. Now to our today's video, you will understand where I'm coming from. So guys, today's video is going to be a story time of a Ugandan lady by the name of Priska, a single mother of one beautiful baby girl who found love on online dating apps with a guy from Denmark. So when Priska found love on online dating apps, was really, really happy, very excited, just like I told you when I started this video. Yeah. And because everything was going very well between them, after four months of chatting, they decided to meet for that first time, but also planned that. On their first meeting, they are going to get married. And yes, it happened, they got married. But after getting married, guys, what happened, it is going to shock you very, very much. And not only shock you, you are going to learn a lot. As someone who is on online dating apps, searching for love, especially to you, my dear, beautiful ladies, black African women, that are searching for white men. Yes, most of the things that you're going to hear in this story are the same, same things I've been warning you about, are the same, same things I told you guys not to do. But unfortunately, this lady started following me shortly after 
her wedding. So guys, before I jump into this video, I would like to tell you how I got this story. So Priska has been my subscriber for almost two years. I didn't know about that because I've never seen her comment. You know, those silent followers, <laughs> you are many, I know. <laughs> So Priska has been following me, watching my videos until last week when she approached me on Instagram and was like, hi Bella, I've got something that has been burning me a lot. I want to share it with you. I was like, no problem, go ahead and tell me about it because Priska says didn't have anyone to share this with, was deeply suffering and wanted someone to talk to. So when I told her, tell me about it, that is when she narrated everything to me. And after narrating everything to me, of course, I gave her some advice, the advice that really gave her a relief. And she felt like, oh yes, I thank God to contact Bella, told me, Bella, you don't know how much you have helped me. So yes, guys, after giving her an advice, that is when I thought of sharing this story with you. But again, I can't just bring a story here without asking Priska. So I asked Priska and I was like, please let us share this because I know it is going to help lots of ladies out there. These are the same, same things I've been saying in my videos. But when we get stories like these become an example that guys, I said this, now you see what happened and people will listen. And we are going to save lots of ladies not to find themselves in the situation that you are in right now. Priska said, it's okay. So I started asking her like those deep, deep questions. You know, guys, sometimes I act as a detective. <laughs> Yes, but this is all wanting to know everything into details so that we get to learn. So let's jump into this love story. So dear friends, Priska's love story begins with a bit of her life background, her love life. Was she in a relationship with a Ugandan guy? If yes, what happened? I told you Priska is a single mother of one beautiful baby girl. So let's dig a little bit deep to understand better who is Priska, where she came from, and what pushed her to join online dating apps. So dear friends, Priska tells us, yes, she was in a love relationship before with a Ugandan guy. Actually, that Ugandan guy was her first love. They were so much in love with each other and eventually decided to start living together. It was such a strong relationship full of love and happiness. And because you know guys that they are not a brother and a sister <laughs> living together, they could enjoy the good <laughs> and the result, Priska became pregnant. So after being pregnant, that is when everything changed. They started having lots of misunderstandings and in the end, it couldn't work out at all. So what they both decided is to end that relationship and go separate ways. And after nine months, Priska delivered her beautiful baby girl. And after deliverance, the baby started growing. Priska took care of her baby girl. When she grew up a little bit, she looked for a job and continued with her life as a single mother. So guys, if you are a woman, you are going to understand me or you are going to relate. When we go through a lot in the name of love, it reaches a point things, you know, reach here. <laughs> And you tell yourself, you know what? Me with men, I am done. I don't need any man by my side. You know, I'm okay. I've got my job. Like if you are a single mother, I've got my kids. I am complete. You know, you tell yourself like that and that gives you, you know, some sort of a relief and confidence and positivity to keep moving forward. But the truth is, or oh, in reality, it's not that really you don't want any man by your side. It's because that is your defense mechanism. You know, to protect your precious heart from being hurt 
by men but as this goes on due to the environment you are living maybe at work you see lots of women you're working with your colleagues are married very happily married sometimes they talk about their husbands how they did this how, how they did that <laughs> maybe during the weekend and you are there you don't have anything to say or most of your age mates are married there is social media right now so you go on social media you start seeing lots of people that you know are happily married and when you return back home in the evening after work and maybe your kids are in bed or you are single you don't have any kid you lie on the bed and start thinking of your life you feel so lonely you'll be like i really need a man by my side so yes before Priska was like I don't need any man you know to be complete I don't need any man by my side <laughs> I don't need any love the love of my daughter is enough but after some time she started feeling so lonely and she had lots of friends that were married some of the friends were married to white guys so they advised her why can't you join online dating apps? You will find a good white guy that will truly love you as you are and will love your baby as if he is own. So she was convinced and that is when Priska decided to join online dating apps. That was 2019. So Priska tells us in 2019, she joined Afro Introductions. That is the first dating site that her friends recommended to her. And yes, created her account, started chatting with guys from all over the world. Remember, she didn't have like enough experience on online dating apps. And unfortunately, the friends were not like Bella who gives you tips and tricks. If you see this, it's a red flag. If a guy says this, run or ask a guy this, ask a guy that. <laughs> No, she didn't have any of that information. So kept on chatting with guys, but most were playing games. Until one day came across a profile of a Danish guy, a guy from Denmark. So she only said hi and the guy responded, hello, how are you? And then she was like, I'm very fine. And after chatting few messages that day, the guy was like, oh, I see you are from Uganda. Uganda is very, very far. I'm a single dad. I can't leave my kids and come to you in Uganda. So I wish you all the best, you know, in your search. Bye. And the next thing, the guy blocked Priska. So after Priska being blocked, of course, she felt really bad. And that's the time you start regretting born African. Born in Africa, you'll be like, I wish I was in Europe. This could have been my husband. Yeah, but it is what it is. The guy had blocked her. So Priska decided to keep on with her search. But as you know, guys, the struggle is real. It's not easy to find love on online dating apps. Yes, some people are very lucky when they join immediately. They find love within weeks, within few months, they find. But for Priska, it was not like that, guys. She kept on searching. And at that time when she joined, it was 2019, June. 2019 passed. Then 2020 came. 2021, still, Priska was on online dating apps searching for love, but nothing. So, due to lots of challenges on online dating apps and someone who has been there for more than two years, it can be frustrating. So, she decided to at least take a break for a while. So, after taking a break, that 2021, Priska tells us, received a friend request on Facebook, of a white guy so when she saw that friend request you know she's a single lady and if a guy is asking for friends of course you decided to give it a try <laughs> and i've always advised you guys if you are single put yourself out there whether it is on online dating apps whether it is on facebook whether it is on instagram whether it is in real life yeah, so this explains to why Priska accepted the friend request 
of that white guy so when she accepted this guy started writing to her and Prisca was like I don't know you so the guy had to explain until Prisca understood it was the same same guy from Denmark that had blocked her in 2019 on afro introductions so this guy was like i'm really sorry prisca to block you on afro introductions i was such a fool you know after thinking of it very very well you are the right woman for me so these words really entered prisca's head and she got so excited was like okay so after having a long conversation on facebook the guy asked for Prisca's WhatsApp numbers. She gave him the number, then moved to WhatsApp. You know, the love was hot, hot, hot and new. So they kept on chatting, chatting. The relationship really became strong without knowing they were already in a relationship dating. Yeah. <laughs> So dear friends, in the early stages of getting to know each other, this Danish guy, his name is Aaron, told her that has got five kids. Three were his own, but two were of the ex-wife. But as you know, when you guys get married, the kids of course become his too. So when you guys divorce, of course, this guy is still the father to the kids. So that is why he told Priska has got five kids. Priska was okay with it because she had one baby girl. So as they kept on talking, you know, you plan of the future. They also agreed that in the future, they are going to add one kid. So yes, guys, the relationship continued really, really good and it came the time for introduction. So on Priska's side, of course, she introduced him to some of her friends and some of her relatives. And on Aaron's side, he had five kids. But among those five kids, Priska was able to talk to two of the kids. The eldest had moved out, wasn't living with the father. The other two, Priska tells us, it seemed like they were not interested at all to get to know her, to talk to her. Even at the time she was talking to the two siblings, the youngest, these two other kids is like... They were not happy about it. That is the impression, or that's how Priska felt when she was talking to Aaron's kids. But on Aaron's side, he was assuring her everything is fine, don't worry. So whenever she could be like, I feel like your kids don't like me, he could tell her and assure her that don't worry about them. So she had to believe in Aaron and keep on with their relationship. So I told you that Aaron had five kids. Of course, we have to talk a bit about the ex-wife. So in their introduction, when they first started talking, of course, you have to ask a guy what happened to your past love relationship experience <laughs> because he was a divorced guy. So Aaron told her that the ex-wife was a drug addict. And not only that, the ex-wife cheated on him. He was on a business trip in Algeria. When he returned back to Denmark, that same same day, caught his wife red-handed on bed, enjoying the goodies <laughs> with another man. Felt really, really hurt, couldn't keep on with a relationship with the wife, then had to ask for a divorce. Though the mother of the wife always blamed Aaron for the wife to cheat on him. So that remained like a question mark in Prisca's head. Why is that the mother-in-law is blaming you for the wife cheating on you, but did not want to go further or so deep to ask Aaron why, why, why? So she had to accept everything that Aaron was telling her, but never did anything about that question mark. So yes, Prisca was like, the past is the past. We have to just let go of the past. I've got also my own past. The relationship continued and Aaron returned or unblocked Prisca in June 2021. They kept on chatting 
till September 2021. Around September, Aaron started telling Priska that he is so crazily in love with her, cannot live without her, so wants to take a big step in their relationship. Something that every woman out there that is searching for love if you hear such kind of a proposal, <laughs> you become happy. Aaron wanted them to get married. So Priska was really happy. Tells us or was telling me, Bella, the whole excitement, the whole idea of getting married to a white guy took over me. I was so happy and I accepted. I was like, yes, <laughs> I agree with you. I'm so in love with you too. Let's get married. But where did they plan to get married? They decided that they're going to get married in Uganda. So yes, they started planning about their wedding, though some days Aaron could be like, oh, I don't know if I am so sure about this. I don't want to leave my kids. You know, I'm a single dad. Oh, Uganda. You know, he started again talking of Uganda being far. So he wasn't all that convinced, but... Priska tells us had to convince him and he got convinced. I was like, oh yes, I want us to get married. Let's keep on with our plans. And eventually he sent her the money to go register their marriage and prepare everything for their civil wedding. And yes, guys, Priska did as they planned, registered the marriage, prepared everything. In October 2021, Aaron flew to Uganda for their wedding. But before I continue with this story, I asked Priska, when we are dating this guy, has he ever spoiled you in a long distance relationship? Because remember, they started dating <laughs> that June 2021 when he returned. So July, August, September, October, those are four months. So my question was, in those four months, was this guy spoiling you? And Prisca was like, yes, he was spoiling me. Actually, he sent me some money three times before even meeting. So if you were asking yourself this question, now you have an answer. Yes, Aaron was spoiling Prisca in their long distance relationship. Now let's continue when he flew to Uganda for their wedding. So yes, at the airport, Priska was there waiting for him, very excited, you know, <laughs> the husband to be. <laughs> yes, guys, the time came, Aaron landed. When Priska saw him, was super, super happy. Guys, if you want to know Priska's age, she is in her middle 20s and Aaron is in his early 50s, yeah. But she loved him just the way he is. Age is just a number. <laughs> so it was such a wonderful day for Priska and Aaron. They were very, very happy to meet each other for that first time. Finally. Yeah. So after the airport hug, they went to the hotel where Aaron had booked. So guys, now I know that you have two questions in mind. <laughs> First, did he bring gifts Bella? And second, did they enjoy the goodies <laughs> for that first night or they waited? So the answer is yes. After arriving in the hotel, he had brought lots of gifts for her. And when it comes to the goodies, <laughs> Yes, she shared the goodies because the guy had come for marriage. So there was no way she was going to be like, no, I'm not giving you the goodies. I want to get to know you. No. <laughs> they had agreed it's marriage, marriage. So the guy had enjoyed the goodies that same, same night. And it really went super good. <laughs> that he did not change his mind on marrying her. He was like, I am determined. I want to get married to you. So after spending some few days in Kampala, they went to the village where her parents lives for the bride price ceremony. 
So yes guys, the journey started and eventually arrived in the village. After arriving, Priska's parents were very very happy to see Aaron. They were also very very happy for their daughter, you know, making them very proud. And this is something I've talked when I started this video. That moment when you're feeling like you're making your parents happy, you need to ask yourself a question. Will my parents continue to be so proud of me or I am going to cause an embarrassment later to my parents? It's not that I'm thinking negatively. <laughs> Because these days you bring your stories and after telling me your stories, I start asking you questions. Questions that put you in a situation like, hmm, Bella is trying to be so negative. No, I want you to be sure of what you are about to do. So always, yes, you're happy, you're happy, but in some moment, try to think well. <laughs> Think very well and if your intuition tells you yes, they'll keep on being proud of you. But if your intuition tells you mm, no, no girl, something is not right, stop, okay? Stop immediately. We know in Africa, especially if you're from the village, when you have a kid before getting married, it's an embarrassment to the parents. But you eventually getting married, it's like it cancels. <laughs> That embarrassment that you caused your parents before by having a baby before getting married. So everything was good. Aaron was so happy. You know how they welcomed him and he paid for the bride price. They celebrated everyone happy. And after the celebration, they had to return to Kampala to go ahead with their civil marriage, civil wedding. So they invited few friends and family to attend. So because Priska had prepared everything, the outfits, everything was ready. They were only waiting for the date to come. And yes, the date arrived. It was their wedding day. Priska was super happy. Eventually guys, getting married, to a white guy. <laughs> yeah, so the parents, the friends were around and yeah, they got married. For Priska and Aaron, it was a magical day. They really had a very beautiful celebration. And guys, Priska and Aaron tied the knot on 3rd of November, 2021. So Priska tells us after getting married, Aaron stayed for one week, but their plan was to start the process of applying for a family reunion visa. So yes, after that one week, Aaron left and returned to Denmark. Priska continued to prepare all the documents that were needed for that family reunion visa. So yes, guys, when everything was ready with the documents in February 2022, Priska applied for her family reunion visa. But as you know, if you apply for a family reunion visa, you need to wait for at least six months to get the results from the embassy if it is a yes or it is a denial. So Priska applied for her family reunion visa in February 2022, waited till July 2022. And when July came, got the results, but it was a denial. And the reasons to be denied the visa were, first of all, they said it was too early for her to ask for a family reunion visa, provided that they had just got married. These people got married in November and February. That is when she applied for the family reunion visa. Moreover, these people got married on the first meeting. The second reason to be denied, they say due to age difference. I told you he is in her middle 20s and this guy is in his 50s. They think Priska's intention is only to get the citizenship. So that is why they denied her that family reunion visa. After being denied the visa, she cried a lot. And also on Aaron's side, yeah, he wasn't happy at all. The situation was really frustrating. So July, when she got denied the visa, in October 
2022, Aaron flew to Uganda to go see his wife. And Priska was so happy. And Priska was so happy. They stayed together for three weeks. And then he returned to Denmark. So after being denied the visa for the first time, when Aaron went to Uganda, they talked about it. And they were like, they're going to wait for another four months and then reapply again. That's what they did. After four months, they reapplied again for the family reunion visa. But again, after waiting for six months, it was another denial. They told her same, same reasons that they denied the first application are the same, same reasons they are denying even this time oh my god she cried a lot was so frustrated disappointed and then decided to call aaron when she decided to call aaron aaron picked and when he got the news started hating on himself blaming that he has wasted lots of his money to go to uganda and this whole visa process but nothing has happened he was super super upset so guys, we take a bit of a pause about this story. I want to say something. I have told you that finding love on online dating apps is not easy. It's very, very challenging. But guys, even after finding love, talk to all ladies that found love on online dating apps, especially those who are in an interracial relationship. Maybe the lady was living in Africa or maybe the lady was living, let's take an example, in the Philippines. It's not easy. Guys, you face lots of challenges and if your love is not all that strong, you will give up on the way. Especially guys, if he was not all that into you, he is going to abandon you. He is going to leave that relationship. He will not fight for you. It's challenging. That is why you need to keep on praying. But in your bios, guys, make sure you write that. You need a guy that is ready to fight with you whatever challenge that might come, you know, in the process of you guys being together. Yeah, you write that, you pray, watch the red flags, make sure the guy is really into you because if he is really into you he will not leave you no matter the challenges so let us continue with this story so yes when he got that news of course he went again to uganda and priska tells us from the time they got married till 2023 in november aaron had gone to uganda eight times three times he went with his youngest daughter and i have something i need to say here about this youngest daughter because i told you that aaron's youngest kids were more interested you know getting to know priska others were not all that interested so the youngest yes could go to uganda with the dad but also priska talked about this young girl <laughs> being somehow jealousy of her because all these three times that she went with the dad in Uganda could want to sleep with the dad on the same bed and could tell Priska I am very scared you came into our lives and my dad might forget about me so she could cry 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 wanting to sleep with the dad because in Denmark the young girl could sleep with the dad. <laughs> Kids dramas. <laughs> and here guys, I've got another advice, but I won't give it now. We need to continue with the story. Then I'll talk about it. I'll come back at it again. So yes, guys, Priska got denied the visa twice, but Aaron kept on going to Uganda to meet her. So they talked, and at that time, Aaron was in Denmark, but was planning to go to Uganda in 2023, October. So when they were talking on the phone, he told her that when I come, we are going to again arrange all the documents so that you can reapply again for that family reunion visa. 
Prisco was like, it's okay, no problem. So yes, October came and he flew again to Uganda. So when he arrived on his stay, Prisca told him, we have to start arranging the documents for the visa. But it's like Aaron wasn't all that, you know, interested. Yes, he was saying we should apply, but he wasn't putting enough efforts. Why am I saying this? Prisca tells us when he went, there are some documents he was supposed to bring to Uganda so that they can combine them together and present to the embassy. But this guy never went with those documents. And also when it came to the previous visa that they had applied and then got denied, there were some documents missing because Prisca tells us did a research, had to talk to lots of Ugandan ladies married in Denmark so that they can advise her, you know, on how to prepare her documents, what is needed. So she had the information, you know, on how to do everything right so that she can get that visa. And some of the Ugandan friends in Denmark married advised her that you also need to attach the evidence of your relationship of your marriage in that application. But Aaron could tell her, no, don't attach anything. You will present everything when you go for an interview. But again, the lady could be denied. So this time he told her, I am going to come. We're going to arrange everything. But he didn't bring the documents that were needed. So told her, don't worry. When I go back to Denmark, I am going to send you the documents. So she had no choice than to wait on him. And yes, he stayed three weeks in Uganda. And when he came, he came with this little girl, the youngest daughter. <laughs> And Priska tells us every time this girl could leave Uganda at the airport could cry. But surprisingly, this last time, the baby girl never cried at all. Actually was happy to leave Uganda <laughs> and wasn't giving Priska any attention, you know, because before she was so sweet, could act nice with her, you know, could be so kind. But this time, nothing like that happened. So the husband, Aaron, returned to Denmark. So yes, he returned back to Denmark. They continued communicating, but she noticed some changes in Aaron. He started giving lots of excuses of why he's not communicating as he is supposed to. Whenever she could call, the guy could be like, I'm so busy. I've been on volleyball training for my kids. I'm cooking dinner for my kids. I'm really busy. You know, it is busy, busy excuse every time. Whenever she could tell him, you know what, this communication is also important, you know, for the embassy so that they can see how we communicate. He could keep on giving excuses until Prisca decided to ask him, now we need to reapply again for the visa. You have to send me the documents just like you promised. That is when Aaron was like, no, you have to wait. We are going to try again in February 2024 or April or never. Oh my God, Priska was so surprised. She was actually in a shock. Yeah, was like, what? Why are you saying never? Then that's when Aaron was like, you know what? I'm so tired of this relationship. I don't see it going anywhere. I've invested a lot, but nothing. So I think it's over. Oh my goodness. Priska tells you was shaking at that time. You know when something hits you at the time you least expect it. Yeah, she was not thinking of that at all. Because guys, when we get married, we get married forever. It's forever. <laughs> You don't even think that it will come a day a guy will tell you it's over. No, she was not expecting that at all, at all from him. But yes, the guy was like, it's over between me and you. So when he said it's over, that's when Priska had to ask him, so you are telling me it's over. What should I do? Then 
Aaron told her, listen, you have to move on with your life. Start afresh. I have moved on too with my life. Prisca told him, no, but we are legally married. Do you know that? Then Aaron was like, in your country, we are legally married. But in my country, I am very, very single. So move on with your life. This marriage is done. Goodness. Guys, some men can be really, really cruel. That is why I'm telling you, you need to be very, very careful before you decide to marry anyone, okay? So guys, as I'm talking right now, Priska in Uganda is a married woman, but tells us I've only remained with a ring and the certificate. I don't have any man on my side. My husband has left me. I felt really, really sorry for this young lady. It wasn't easy for her to share with us this story because deep inside is still hurt. Is trying to recover. I told you I gave her an advice. She was like, Bella, you have contributed a lot in my healing journey. And I'm so grateful, guys, that I was a bit of a help to this young lady so i told you guys we have got a lot to learn from this story and i'm going to go so quickly to tell you what we need to learn from this story and also there are some details i haven't given you already concerning this marriage how it was because after getting the whole story from her of course i had my own questions questions to ask her so that i can understand better this will save you you is interested in dating a white guy getting married to a white guy so me listening to this story of course i noticed lots of red flags but also prisca noticed red flags after when the marriage was done was like bella i've also realized where I went wrong. This story was full of red flags that I didn't pay attention at. So I am going to tell you those red flags and we learn from those red flags, guys. So the first red flag is when this guy said that Uganda is very far. He is a single dad, so he can't leave the kids and go to Uganda. Wished Priska best of luck on her search said goodbye and then blocked her a guy who blocks you guys is immature first of all <laughs> and i wouldn't advise any lady to get married to a guy who is immature who acts immature but if a guy tells you you are very far away from me and then returns back after some years to tell you that you are the one he had to think well and discovered that you are the best woman for him you have to ask yourself lots of questions and ask him questions <laughs> has uganda suddenly turned to be the next city in denmark no it is still uganda it is still far away so how comes you came back you have to ask that <laughs> it's very very important and from the response guys you get to learn a lot let us stop being excited of the love that does not even exist because this guy only chatted with her few messages how comes he is sure she is the best woman for him question mark and i told you i advised you never remain with question marks <laughs> you need to get the response you need to get the answers so for me this was a very huge red flag if this guy returned to me i was going to ask him questions and i am very very sure due to how aaron is he was going to block me again but because priska did not have enough experience and was really excited to date a white guy that is why she allowed him into her life another red flag guys priska tells us immediately after they got married the guy had to inform the relatives but 
on the relative side, they were not happy at all, at all. They did not buy the whole idea of him marrying a Ugandan lady, an African lady. That is number one. But also when they got married and the kids came to know that they got married, they were not happy and they talked to their mother, the ex-wife. Then, according to Aaron, the ex-wife had to call him. I was like, I want my husband back. But for me, guys, I did not buy that. Because if that woman really wanted the husband back, wasn't going to wait until Aaron marries Priska to say that I want my husband back. Something was not right somewhere. Question mark. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what Aaron told Priska. So when he told Priska, Priska was like, so what are you going to do? Then he was like, no, I'm not going back. I left her. That lady really hurt me by cheating on me. So do not worry. I am yours. <laughs> and she believed him. But another red flag here, guys, I told you, when it comes to an introduction, you introduce a guy to your family, this guy too needs to introduce you to his family. If he's not doing that, then he needs to tell you why isn't he introducing you to the family so that you get to understand. If you come across a guy on online dating apps and then he tells you, I am divorced and I have got kids, something that is very, very important is for that guy to introduce you to the kids. The kids need to know you. They need to know that their dad has got a girlfriend. Not a guy telling you, oh, I have got kids, but whenever you want to talk about his kids, he doesn't want to go there. It's a no-go zone. <laughs> As a woman, you have to ask yourself, why? Why is it a no-go zone? Is this guy still married? Is worried if the kids see me on a video call, they're going to tell the mother and then they're going to be fire in the castle. <laughs> you have to ask yourself all those questions, okay? Because I know exist lots of guys on online dating apps. They are divorced and they are single fathers and you guys are dating them. You guys are giving them the chance. You need to know how to behave when dating a guy who is a single dad. So the kids getting to know you is very, very important. You shouldn't accept any excuse because if this guy is planning to marry you, why doesn't he want you to know the kids? So another thing that Priska tells us is that his kids, Aaron's kids, were his number one priority. Whatever they said, he could follow, could not oppose at all. So if I am searching for a guy online and the guy tells me my kids are my number one priority, of course, I'll think that guy is going to be a good father if we are to have kids, right? <laughs> yes. But dear friends, if a guy is a single dad and then he thinks that he needs a woman into his life. He needs a wife. Then he needs to make sure he can balance between you and the kids. That's very, very important. He should remain a good father. But at the same time, you should stand on your position as your wife. He should recognize that. It's not that if the kid says no, we need to remove her in that position, then he easily removes you in that position. You don't count anymore. Whatever you say does not make sense. The kids comes first. They are even to run that marriage. No. When you find that or when you notice that in a guy that is a single father on online dating apps, run my sister run because you are going to suffer his kids will never respect you they're going to treat you bad they can even reach an extent of treating you just a woman my dad is sleeping with so be very very careful it's a delicate matter guys <laughs> yeah so we go to another red flag this actually happened to another lady that is going through a divorce right now. I won't mention her name, but when her story is out, you will listen to it. But I think maybe she wants to put the story herself out because she is a content creator, but I had shared her story here. 
So same, same situation happened to Priska. Priska tells us when they got married shortly after, she posted the photos of their wedding on Facebook. And after posting those photos, she got a message from a stranger, a woman, a white woman, telling her, be careful of the man you are married to. Priska was very, very surprised didn't know that lady so what she did contacted the husband and was like i got this message on facebook and it's really really strange then the husband was like send me the details she sent the details the photo of a lady and the husband was like that's my ex-wife don't mind her at all ignore her just block her so she did like how aaron told her blocked if you are here watching this and something like that happens, never ignore it. Go ahead, listen to what that lady has to say. After listening to her, compare, you know, with how the guy is acting with you. Ask those tricky, tricky questions. You will arrive to the truth, but never ignore. Even this lady I'm telling you about that her story is yet to be out. She was contacted by a lady on Facebook and told her i am the ex-girlfriend i've got a lot to tell you about this guy and the lady was a white woman but she ignored the lady actually called her a bitch yes this is the truth but later on the worst happened and she was like i wish i had listened to that lady on facebook that was trying to contact me so we should all learn guys Another red flag, guys. I told you this story is full of red flags and we learn through those red flags. So Priska tells us another red flag. Whenever could want to take photos with Aaron, he could refuse. And the few he could accept could tell her, don't post those photos anywhere. <laughs> okay, that is a red flag. Why? Those are the guys that will date you in the dark and keep you in the dark they are trying to keep you away from the truth because he knows if you post those photos with him his ghosts <laughs> will come and start hunting him <laughs> yeah if you know you know <laughs> so we have a red flag when it comes to the visa process and I know after you watching this video, you are like, Bella, but at least this guy tried his best, you know, to reunite with the wife. But Priska herself, that went through the whole process, tells you that Aaron was telling her, yes, apply for the visa, but he was not all that interested. He wasn't putting enough effort because even the documents that were needed sometimes could not give her all the documents. And when it came to the evidence, like taking photos, chatting, he started being like, he is less interested in that. So he was saying, yes, apply, but only here. <laughs> Didn't mean it. This guy, oh my god, he's so so dangerous. Be careful, dear beautiful ladies. When you date a guy, you should make sure that guy gives importance to his words. Because this Aaron, I can clearly see that he did not give any importance to his words. We have heard that when he came for the second time to Prisca, he was like, I have discovered you are the woman for me. How do you know I'm the woman for you without getting to know me? You know, so that means he does not give any importance to his words. It's like a guy telling you, I love you, but he doesn't show you actions of love so we need to be also very very careful to such kind of guys so why do i agree with priska when she says that he did not mean it first of all guys when these people got married they were not supposed to rush into a family reunion no this lady was supposed to first go see his life get to see the kids, get to see those relatives that didn't buy the whole idea of them getting married. Maybe after getting to know her, they could change their mind, you know, towards her. But knowing that 
The family is not okay. The kids are not agreeing with you. Why should you apply for the visa that will make you stay forever with the people that don't like you? So the right thing to do for Prisca was to first apply for a tourist visa. But on the other side, let's say the husband convinced her and she was like, okay, we apply for a family reunion visa. For a guy who really wants to be with you, when that visa was denied, he was not supposed to go again and again and again in Uganda without telling her, my love or my wife, let us apply for a tourist visa. At least you come, you get to stay here, and then we'll try again for a family reunion visa. This all tells us that Aaron did not mean it when she told her, apply for a family reunion visa. But another thing is that when you are applying for your visa, let it be a fiancé visa, a tourist visa, a family reunion visa. You are not supposed to be in that journey alone. A guy needs to give you a hand of help. You got denied the visa. He was supposed to go with her to the embassy, the Denmark embassy in Uganda and talk to those people. Maybe after seeing him, they could have changed their mind. I remember being denied the visa and my husband called the Italian embassy in Tanzania. Talked to them, they understood and they saw that he is a good man. Trusted him and gave me the visa to come to Italy. But at that time, if he did not call, I am sure they are not going to give me that visa so if a guy really means it that you should apply for the visa go visit him he should walk with you through all that visa process shouldn't tell you apply when they deny you, it's like ah oh, i'm sad but he's not putting any efforts to show you that my love we are together in this i'm going to fight with you let's do this nothing like that so we learn another thing here I have advised you several times, guys, that do not rush into marriage. Imagine these people knew each other for only four months and on the first meeting, they got married. It's not that these guys stayed two months in Uganda, you know, to get to know each other. No, he arrived in Uganda, stayed for some few days. They got married. After one week, he is back again to Denmark. These people did not get time to know each other well. So Priska advises you that please, please take your time. Never rush into marriage because you rush into a marriage that after two or three months or six months, then it's over or after a year because Priska's marriage lasted two years and a half. Yeah, but what happened? it's over. She is single again. So no need guys, no need to rush. Take your time. Watch the red flags. Guys, I told you the red flags are many. So also Priska tells us when Aaron could be in Uganda, he could always be on his phone and never allowed Priska to touch phone or even peep on his phone. He was so protective when it came to his phone. But on Priska's side, he wanted to know everything that Priska does on her phone, whom he talks to. He could even control all the messages when he could be in Uganda on Priska's phone. What did I advise you when it comes to a guy's phone, especially a guy you met online? you have to play a detective role. Make sure you observe that guy, how he behaves when he is with you and is on his phone. So that was a red flag that Aaron was hiding something from her. If you have been watching my videos, I think you remember Rusov's video. I did a video with a Ugandan lady who lives in Germany and she talked about this thing of getting married in Africa. When you get married in Africa or in your country, please, please make sure that that guy registers your marriage in his country. So immediately after getting married, if he goes back to his country, keep reminding him, keep asking him if he has registered that marriage. And if he tells you yes, he should show you the evidence 
<laughs> if you see him making corners, when you ask him if he registered your marriage, no, something is not right. Because guys, in Africa, yes, as a woman, like now, Prisca is someone's wife. But the guy in his country, if the marriage is not registered, he is single. He can even go to another African country and marry another woman. Or he can decide to marry another woman in his country. So before you keep on welcoming this guy as your husband in your country, giving him the goodies 24-7... <laughs> Get to know if your marriage is registered in his country. And guys, I know some of you will be like, maybe he got tired, you know, to go to Uganda all the time. No, all that money he used to go to Uganda, he could have simply invited her for a tourist visa. I don't know how many times so that they keep knowing each other on both sides on his real life in Denmark and on Prisca's real life but that did not happen also guys something you need to keep in mind if a guy truly loves you he will never abandon you no matter what he will stick with you he will keep trying he will do everything to make sure that you guys are together did Aaron did that? No, abandoned her. Because I have seen lots of couples, you find a lady is still in Africa, but the relationship still works. A guy makes sure he keeps going or he invites her, maybe on a tourist visa, as they keep on convincing the embassy that we really love each other. It's not that my wife wants the citizenship of my country. And yes, eventually these people be granted the family reunion visa. But him giving up easily like that, telling her there is no need for me even to give you a divorce. I am very, very single in my country shows that this guy planned it all. They always plan it. You know, I am going to be going to Uganda, enjoy. And then afterwards, I'm going to leave her. After all, it's not my country. I'm not going to respect their laws. You know, I'll just leave her and keep on with my life. But on your life, they don't care. They just leave you stranded. I'm saying all this because there is a lady who was married to a guy and then they never signed the prenup agreement you know? and she had the guy talking with another friend on the phone that after all i'm going to divorce her you know there is nothing to tie me we never signed any prenup agreement like communion of properties so it's very simple what does that tell you it tells you that he planned it all the time he started dating you so lastly guys on the red flags because there are very very many after listening to her story i asked her please priska i want you to respond this question the honest way you told me this guy came to uganda eight times but in those eight times that he came to uganda where was this guy staying was he staying with you in your house or maybe he rented an apartment for you so you could stay in that rented apartment as husband and wife or this guy could stay in a hotel and to my surprise Priska told me that all those times that Aaron went to Uganda they could stay in a hotel and he could also act as someone who is on vacation <laughs> Not like they lived as husband and wife. It never happened. So now I think you've got an answer of who is this Aaron. This guy was traveling to Uganda just to enjoy, just like a vacation. He is blessed. He has got all that money to fly anytime he wants to fly in. It's not a big deal with him. So for him, it was all about enjoying his vacation, having a woman, you know, that he has tied down. You are mine. I own you. <laughs> so I'm going to enjoy the goodies every time I come. You have have to come and stay with me in the hotel because if this guy was a good guy was going to stay with Priska at her house because Priska tells us she has got a two-bedroom house that she built 
herself. She's such a strong woman, an independent woman. Too sad she landed in the hands of a wrong guy, Aaron. So tells us Aaron could say, I can't stay in your house because you don't have a sitting toilet. Really? Did this guy even care about this lady? No, he never cared. Because if these people were married, and let's take an example, she got the visa to go to Denmark. Of course, they were going to go back to Uganda, you know, for vacation and stay in that house. So what he was supposed to do as a good guy, as a responsible guy, as a guy who wants family, you know, it's marriage. He was going to help her buy the things that would make him comfortable in that house if it is that sitting toilet he was going to buy it you know and put it there for her that's a good guy i've seen lots of guys especially these white guys going to africa buying lands for their wives building houses actually there is a story that unfortunately i can't bring it here because the lady refused but the guy really wanted to bring it so he always shows me the progress they're actually building a house in Uganda, a very big, beautiful house for the wife. And it's not that they're going to be living in Uganda now, no. A lady is to go to America, you know, join him. But of course, when they go to visit Uganda, they will go to that house. And when his pension time comes, of course, they'll spend lots of time in Uganda. That's a guy with good plans. Not a guy that tells you, I can't stay at your place, because it's not comfortable for me. I want to stay in the hotel because everything is done, you know, for me. <laughs> that means the guy is there like he is on vacation. Not that he is coming to live with you, get to know you, you know, get to know your life. <laughs> I've seen people going and live in the village with their girlfriends. These white guys, but the good white guys, the husband materials, not a guy that will take you to the hotel all the time. That really concluded that Aaron took that marriage as a joke, whereby Prisca took it seriously. So guys, another thing that Prisca tells us is that after Aaron breaking up with her on the phone, Actually, he doesn't think it's important to give her a divorce because he is single, so doesn't want to know anything about her. She should just move on with her life. So something told her, go on Afro introductions to check. So she went to check on Afro introductions and to her surprise, guys, found out that Aaron is very active on Afro introductions and wrote he is a single dad and divorced imagine guys so be very very careful if you come across his profile and tells you he is interested in you please please send me the photo so that i can tell you if he is aaron or he is not aaron just to protect you you know yeah so dear friends we have come to an end of our today's video let me hope you enjoyed a lot and you learned a lot please please give this video a thumbs up if you have liked it share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super super good comment below what you think about this video i would like to know until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao